Okay, so I saw this earlier on, uh, new Raspberry Pi OS release December 2020, and there's a big list. I had a read of it when I was at work, and uh, I figured I would go in and update and see what happens. I have updated this recently, so we'll see if there's any other changes need to be made. So let's open up a terminal and type in sudo apt update. I only updated this yesterday, so I wonder if this is going to be different. So yeah, 14 packages, so there's a lot of updates again. So sudo apt upgrade. Uh, while it's doing that, let's do NeoFetch and just see that it shows what version it's on and we can see what changes. So let's say yes to the updates. And let's take a photo of that NeoFetch so I can compare the details side by side. And I'll put that on my NAS drive so I can get it up on this system after I've rebooted. And while it's updating, let's have a look at that page. Uh, so new Raspberry Pi OS released December 2020. So Chromium is updated to version 84. This has taken us a bit longer than we would have liked, but it's always quite a lot of work to get our video hardware acceleration integrated with new releases of the browser. That's done now, so you should see good quality video playback on sites like YouTube. We've also given events this year, done a lot of testing and tweaking on video, conferencing clients such as Google Meet, Microsoft Teams and Zoom, and they should all now work smoothly with your Raspberry Pi's Chromium. That's great news. Uh, so Pulse Audio, from this release onwards we're switching Raspberry Pi OS to Pulse Audio. Audio in Linux is quite complicated. There are multiple different standards for handling audio input and output, and it does sometimes seem that what has happened historically is that whenever anyone wanted to use audio in Linux, they looked at the existing libraries and programs and went, hmm, I don't like that, I'll write something new and better. Okay. The most common audio interface which lies underneath most Linux systems is called ULSA, the Advanced Linux Sound Architecture. All sorts of information in here about audio. Good news for Raspberry Pi users is that if we've got it right, you shouldn't even know it's the change. Pulse Audio now runs by default, and while the volume control and audio input output selector on the taskbar looks almost identical to the one in previous releases of the OS, it is now controlling Pulse Audio rather than ULSA. You can use it just as before, select your output and input devices, adjust the volume, and you're good to go. And they've added pro device profiles for Bluetooth devices. Printing. Now, this is something that I've done in a video before because printing with Raspberry Pi OS isn't good and uh, this whole cup system is just clumsy there's no need for it now try Ubuntu and you'll find that it's super easy for printing it just detects your printer and works so hopefully this new system will recognize my printer and work really well new hardware options we've added a couple of options to the Raspberry Pi configuration tool on the system tab if you're running a Raspberry Pi with a single status LED there is now option to select whether the LED just shows that the power is on or it flickers to show drive activity oh, that's nice Performance tab, there are options to allow the new to control the new Raspberry Pi case fan. You can select the GPIO pin to which it is connected and set the temperature at which it turns on and off. Interesting. So how do I get it? Oh look, they want you to do sudo apt update and sudo apt full upgrade. So let's do that as well. It's probably finished the other bit. Oh no, 61%. We well, must be doing most of it already, doing the normal update. So I've already done sudo apt update, so I'll just need to do the sudo apt full upgrade. So the one thing I would want added to Raspberry Pi OS, I really like Raspberry Pi OS. I've got no issue with it being 32-bit because compatibility and just the performance on the Pi is excellent. Um, but I really would like to see a system for uh, searching for the app. So when you go to launch an app, there's no way of, of kind of just typing out. So when I press start here, I would want to be able to type out what I was, so if I wanted Gparted, I want to just start typing Gparted and it would come up. Instead, you have to kind of look through and try and find it, of course it's going a bit slow because it's doing the updates, uh, and launch Gparted that way. Uh, loads of other operating systems do it, but uh, Raspberry Pi OS, I think it's that one thing that, that I don't like about Raspberry Pi OS, is just that if you install something new, not quite sure where it is, you've got to actually search through it to find what category it's in. Just starting up Commander Pi because uh, I've noticed it was running. Oh, it is running at right. It's running at 2200 now. It was running at the the low clock speed. Now it's probably because it's just doing something in terminal. Um, but wasn't there a yeah force turbo mode? Force forces turbo mode frequencies even when the arm cores are not busy. Over voltage will be set to six. Uh, oh, I need to restart to do that, so I won't bother doing that now. But uh, that means that it will use the higher clock speed all the time. So you can see here it's flicking between 2.1 and dropping down to 600 
Uh, I mean, it, it probably doesn't make an awful lot of difference when it's doing this sort of update, but it's just it seems to be taking a while, and it's running from an SD card. I'd normally use this on an SSD, but I haven't got Raspberry Pi OS on an SSD at the moment. I've got Twister, um, and uh, probably a lot of these updates will apply to Twister OS as well. Yeah, we'll keep the current version, so I'll press N. And while it's still going, I guess I can check what version of Chromium I've got. Well, it's already on 84 anyway. 840417141, remember that. So let's just get that picture of NeoFetch. It was here. Yeah, it's this one here. Let's pop that somewhere on the desktop so we can have a look at it in a minute. So we're done. So I'm going to do that other bit where it said uh, about the full upgrade. Oh. So not going to let me paste it in. Let's try that again. So yeah, sudo apt full dash upgrade. Looks like it needs to do a tiny little bit more. And also the other bit it was talking about was it is safe to just accept the default answer to any questions. Then to install Pulse Audio Bluetooth support, you will need to enter the following commands into terminal. Well, we've got to try that, haven't we? Okay, so that's all done. Let's do the audio bit. So yes to that. Yes, abort. Oh, we did it that time. Paste that in. Okay, so now we can reboot. Okay, so let's call that page up again. Everything rebooted fine, everything seems all right and go to history and one tap swap over the volume and input selector on the taskbar from ulcer to pulse audio after your raspberry pi has restarted right click a blank area on the taskbar and choose add remove panel items add remove panel items find the plugin labeled volume control ulcer there it is select it and click remove and then click add button Volume control pulse audio. Volume control pulse audio. Click add. So this should be the new one. So let's right click on that. Bose speaker. Oh, which is switched off at the moment. Now I've probably connected this speaker to something else at some point, so it might struggle to connect to it. So oh, it says it's connected on there, although I've got a flashing light on my speaker. Ready to pair. Latest video, desktop. Well, I think it is it is connected. Right, so let's try uh, a bit of YouTube. Let's close down one of these Chromiums and go to YouTube. Mobile device not found. And let's Ready try. Ready to pair. Oh. Latest video, desktop. Yeah, I think I've probably paired it with something else. So I'm going to repair to my Bluetooth speaker. So I'm pressing and holding the Bluetooth button. And it will say something about Bluetooth pairing in a minute. Mobile device not found. Ready to pair. So if I remove device, you sometimes get this with Bluetooth where you just have to get rid of something. Oh, it doesn't seem to want to, I can't seem to select it. No, it doesn't seem to want to select it. And I can't close that. Oh, it's all gone wrong. Well, the Bluetooth bits stopped working altogether. So what I think I'm going to do is reboot again, just in case. At least Raspberry Pi OS uh, starts up nice and quick. So let's go to Bluetooth and uh, can I remove it from there? Remove, click and remove. That, that works better. Right, so add device. So it should show up my device. How can there be this many Bluetooth devices near me? I have had it with my Bose speaker where it wants to pair. Yeah, there's two, two versions, so now it's picked it up as audio. So that should work fine now paired successfully. Uh, so audio, right click on that, select Bose, failed to connect to Bluetooth device. <laughs> okay, I'm doing well here. Yeah, it doesn't like it. So I'm going to go for AV jack and just use that for now. I would come back to that because I want to show the operating system really. So let's have a look at YouTube performance because that's the one we've been waiting for. And let's do a search for Lee PSP video HDR, which is my demo content video. There we go. 
and let's go for 1080 and full screen. Well, oh, the video looks great. That does look very good for full screen 1080. That's impressive because this is also very hard to show as well. I've got the audio muted, that's why the audio is not coming out. But I was just thinking, have I got the audio over my speech, which I have done in before in a video. Uh, that is looking good, actually. Yeah, that is nice to see, right? Let's see if the audio is working. And also, it's less fussy about you moving the mouse and things like that as well. So we've had real problems with Raspberry Pi about, oh, you can't touch the mouse when it's playing video because it, it starts to go all sketchy. So uh, if I do stats for nerds, what does it say? 90 dropped. Uh, but that usually happens at the start. 99 dropped. Still dropping frames, but not in any degree that you particularly notice. I can't really see it when I'm looking at it. And it seems to have settled down now. It doesn't seem to be dropping any frames. Yeah, that's good. Oh, this is more like it. And going back to that, that seems to not be struggling at all. Dropping some frames, but it would drop some frames transitioning from the full screen back in. But yeah, that's really good. Okay, so good news. Okay, so let's check uh, what it does with the printers then. Uh, so where has it got printers under? Accessories. See, this is somewhere I should be able to just start typing printers. Uh, here we go, print settings. Oh, and it's there, look. So my printer is already recognized, so I'm guessing that means it works straight away. Uh, well, I tell you what, let's open something up. I've got here Raspberry Pi camera overclock GPU. What is this? There's probably not a lot here. So let's hit print and select my printer and hit print. And I'll run upstairs and have a look, see if it's printed out. And it has. And here's what it sounds like. Uh, so also, uh, I was going to check that NeoFetch and see if something was different on that. So here's the photo I took. Let's close down that print and uh, let's run NeoFetch again and see if anything's changed on that, just out of interest. So let's get them closer together. Kernel is, yeah, kernel's updated, look, so it's 5.4.72, this is 5.4.79. Uh, packages 1920, 1855. Shell is the same, resolution's the same, obviously. The open box, GTK3, LX terminal, monospace, uh, but everything else seems to be the same. Although it's using less memory, uh, but it isn't doing anything, so that's probably why. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.